Well, hello there. Glad everybody made it over for techteachertips.weebly.com. Today we're going to be checking out Microsoft PowerPoint and some of the basics in getting started with this program. Now, anytime I start with a PowerPoint presentation, I always like to start with a blank layout. So I always right click on the slide, go to layout, and I choose blank. I like to have a nice blank canvas to start with because it allows for unlimited creativity. Now the first step in making sure that you create a successful PowerPoint presentation is adding appropriate backgrounds. Your backgrounds are a representation of what it is that you are presenting. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up your Internet Explorer browser or Google Chrome or whatever system that you prefer and go to Google and once you get to Google uh, go ahead and click on images and then today we're going to be creating a PowerPoint presentation for elements so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, periodic table now, if you were just to select one of these images, you would not be sure whether or not that image was able to be used or modified for commercial purposes. So what you need to do is come up here and click on your settings button and go to advanced search. When this pulls up, on the bottom, there's a usage rights. You need to click on free to use, share, or modify even commercially and then select advanced search. What this does is it takes the images that are not in the um, copyright free license attributions or in the public domain and it gets rid of them. Now most of these images that are going to show up are going to be from Commons Wikimedia or Flickr or some of the other popular sharing websites. What you want to do is go ahead and right click on your picture and I always like to say open link in new window and then what you need to do is say visit page when you get to the page you're going to scroll down and then you need to check this licensing right here this one is under license under the Creative Commons attribution so that means that I'm free to share I can remix it but I have to provide attribution to the author so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on the image and I'm going to say save image as. The reason why you want to do save image as and not copy is that you are going to sometimes lose some of your files if you do not save them and then insert them. So I went ahead and saved it. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I'm going to choose insert picture go into my doc and then once you've gone in locate your image go ahead and click insert and now your image is available for use one of the things I really like to do when I'm creating a PowerPoint presentation is spice up my backgrounds now if I was to have this as my background image I would not be able to put text over it or be able to work anything into this that would not make it hard to see. So what I do is I click on my picture and there's a thing called picture effects. And you can go into some of these different um, variations and you can also recolor your picture. Now recoloring and choosing a grayscale or a washout will provide you with an image that is able to have text put over top of it. So if I was to go insert text box, put it over top of it, I could say my report on the periodic table of elements. Go ahead and increase the size on that, center it, and now I've got a good start to my first slide. Now as you go through and work in your PowerPoint presentation, one of my recommendations is that you try to stick with a theme. Anytime you're working with a new idea or a new concept, try and fit 
a picture into that, that will work best. So let's see, I'm going to type in oxygen and let's see, label for commercial reuse with modification. So I'm still okay on that. So let's see, I'm going to talk about oxygen on my next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open link in new window. I want to visit the page. I'm going to scroll down and this work is in the public domain. So I'm okay to go ahead and save image as. And I can go back to my PowerPoint. And say insert. And go ahead and place this on the background. Now some things you can do, you can get fancy if your picture doesn't cover the whole thing. You can slide it over, copy it, paste it. I can make like a double image. If I shift click both of them and go to my recolor, choose my washout, I can wash both of them at the same time. And then if I'd like to crop these pictures down, I go to format, crop. Let's move those pictures in and now I've got my background picture for my next slide. Now because this one was in the public domain, there's not any attributions that are required to be put with this picture. However, this image we used was not in the public domain and it does need to be have an attribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my file here. I'm going to select the website because this is my source. I'm going to go back into my PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to right click on my picture and I'm going to say hyperlink. Paste the web address in there and then click OK. Now in my report or my PowerPoint presentation when it's completed, if somebody was going through this, they could click on the picture and it would take them to the slide that has the source and it would uh, go towards part of my attribution. Now one thing to remember is that the end of your presentation when you go through to do your sources you're going to need to make sure that you put in the website and then do image source and then I go back here and the author is Levan Han so I'm going to copy that paste it in Whoop. to source and then my image, picture, double click, hyperlink, paste, click OK. And now I can go ahead and get rid of this. And I can say periodic table picture. And in doing so, somebody could go ahead and click on the image source and I would take them back to the website and then I'm cleared for my attribution purposes. Now as you're working through your PowerPoint presentation, remember to continue to always add in different background images. You'll always want to make sure you save those images and insert them rather than copy and paste them. And hopefully the basics that I've showed you today with getting started in your PowerPoint presentation will lead you to much success in all uses that you have in this program. Thanks again for stopping by Tech Teacher Tech.